All right, it is time for a review of physical behavior of matter. Let's review types of properties. So we had physical properties. Physical properties can be determined without changing the identity of the substance. So like boiling point, if you boil water, it's still water. You didn't change its identity. Melting point, if you melt gold, it's still gold. You didn't change its identity. You can look at and measure mass, length, density, volume, shape, color, pressure, mat. There's tons of things that you can measure without changing the identity of the substance. Chemical properties, on the other hand, require changing the substance. So it describes how a substance reacts usually. So flammability, rust or corrosion, half-life, tarnishing, okay, those kinds of things, how it reacts. So usually a key word in the question is react with something that indicates chemical property. So this means we have to try to change the substance. Let's review types of changes. So we have physical changes. No new substances are formed. So you break an egg, no new substance. You melt ice, no new substance. You mix candy together, no new substances. Physical change. A chemical change, on the other hand, new substances are formed. When iron rusts, we get new substances. When you bake a cake, you get new substances. When a banana rots, you get new substances. Some signs of a chemical change, so formation of a gas, you see bubbles, formation of a solid, that's called a precipitate. You might see a change in temperature, it gets warm, it gets cold, a change in color or a change in odor, like a smell you all of a sudden notice. And it could also be the release or absorption of energy. You might see light, hear sound. Let's review exothermic versus endothermic. Exothermic means energy is released. The environment gets warmer. Energy is being released. Endothermic, energy is being absorbed. The environment gets colder. The reaction is taking in energy from the environment. Let's review the states of matter. Solid, definite shape, fixed volume. You could use those words interchangeably. The particles are very close and they're vibrating. Strong intermolecular forces and sometimes described as crisp crystal structure, a rigid geometric pattern. Liquid, not fixed shape, but a definite volume. So a liquid is going to take the shape of its container. The particles are close together, but they can slide past each other easily. And there are moderate intermolecular forces. And then we have gas. It is not a fixed shape and in indefinite volume. So those words are interchangeable. The particles are far apart and moving very fast. And they have weak intermolecular forces. Let's review the changes of state. So. Side note, why does ice flow? Well, it's less dense, we should know that, but why? So remember water has those strong bonds called hydrogen bonds? Well, in liquid water, the hydrogen bonds are constantly breaking and reforming, but in ice, the hydrogen bonds become stable and so the particles of water actually become further apart from each other in this geometric kind of structure held together by those strong hydrogen bonds. So if you can see right here, do you see this structure of ice? Those hydrogen bonds form and stay, okay? The hydrogen bonds are stable. And, but you can see the distance between the particles has increased. So that is why it's less dense. All right, so here's a chart about phase changes, but we're gonna go through them. So we can change from a solid to a liquid to a gas. We can also go from solid to a gas or from gas to a solid. So 
solid liquid gas. We can go from solid to liquid, but also liquid to solid. That's why the arrows go in both directions. If we go this way, moving from solid to liquid to gas, it is endothermic. It takes energy in. Anytime we follow that line. So when we go from solid to liquid or solid to gas or liquid to gas. If we go in the other direction, like going from gas to liquid or gas to solid or liquid to solid, it is exothermic, releasing energy. So melting, also called fusion, is solid to liquid and it is endothermic, energy in. Vaporization or evaporation is liquid to gas, endothermic, energy in. Sublimation, solid to gas, energy in, endothermic. Again, they follow that solid to liquid to gas pattern. Now let's look at the other ones. When we have freezing or solidification, it is liquid to solid, it is exothermic. Condensation or gas to liquid is exothermic. Deposition or gas to solid. So frost on windows is one of the most common ways to see this, exo. Let's review kinetic energy and temperature. So kinetic energy is energy of motion, okay? Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles. So at low temperature, that means there's less kinetic energy. That means the particles are moving slower. At a high temperature, that means more kinetic energy. That means the particles are moving faster. And that is a review of the physical behavior of matter. I hope you learned something new today.